Events bring us together, inspire us, and provide us with lasting memories. But trying to run an event agency while creating these special moments can be difficult, demanding, and sometimes even dreadful, especially if you're trying to do it on your own. So the question is, how do we create wow factors for our attendees while delivering top-notch client events, all while running a profitable business? These are the questions, and I'm here to give you the answers. I'm Chrissy Thompson, and welcome to the Event Agency Secrets Podcast. Hi, and welcome back to the Event Agency Secrets Podcast. Today on the show, we have Jason Ree, who is the founder of The Refined Company based in Los Angeles, California. Jason and I met because he planned my wedding, um, which is amazing, (laughs) and it was great. It was so much fun. Um, but one of the things that I loved about Jason is that he really has been able to tap into both the high end wedding market and the corporate market. Um, so yeah, I just thought he'd be a great person to bring onto the show and kind of talk about how to build that type of business. So welcome Jason. Hi, so happy to be here. (laughs) So great to be here. This is definitely one of the, uh, interviews that's been on my list that I've been most looking forward to. So thanks for joining. Um, okay. So for anybody who doesn't know you, Jason, why don't you just give a little bit of background about who you are and how you got into the industry? Um, I am a wedding and event planner. I do design and full production and full service planning. Um, I've been in the industry for about 15 plus years. I am tired and, uh, uh, my back is always out. Um, but I, you know, I think we specialize in really creating experiences and creative events. And so I think anything that's fueled or, um, the intention of the event is to create an experience for the guests. I think that is where we thrive and obviously design being a big factor to that. That is what we love. Um, and you know, I'm also a wedding pro educator with the knot and I sit on a amazing advisory board on the fellowship for change, which gives back to new businesses that are BIPOC, LGBTQIA. And I just think that this community is a very special, um, magical group of people where, you know, you can't even, you can't even get your family and friends to care enough about your wedding day or your special event that you have to hire a stranger. So I think that we are all magical people that work very, very hard to um, fuel celebrations and fuel joy. So I am a big supporter and advocate for the community. I love that about you, Jason. And yeah, yeah, I see you out there just doing great work um, in terms of just speaking about those topics in the industry. Um, so really appreciate that. And anybody who is listening, who wants to hear more about that, I'm sure, um, you could just Google Jason's name and there's lots of great stuff that he's doing out there about that. So, um, but going back to your business, um, I love that you, you know, really highlighted that anything creative fueled and any way you can fuel joy through experiences. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's a great focus to have. I don't think that most people would think of it that way from the jump. I'm curious if that's how you were thinking about your business when you started it or like, how did it first get started? Absolutely not. I think I did a lot of what we all did at the start of this, of, of this business, which is compare ourselves to other people and what other agencies and other planners. And, you know, at the time that I started to not to date myself, but we didn't really have Instagram and social media and even Google wasn't as robust as it was. And so, um, you know, I think the biggest part that I realize now is, uh, you know, I don't have to be like everyone else. You and I are two completely different businesses. And I think that's allowed, that's okay. And I think that that's kind of really the, the, the part that has, I don't know, gotten me really focused on what I want to do and specialize in. And I think it's maybe what separates me from the rest. And I think that that's okay as well, because again, some people don't respond to joy. Some people don't want an event fueled with creativity and love. And if that's the way that you want it to, too, then I hope the check is big enough for you. And I hope that, you know, <laughs> that's what you love as well. So I think that that's just kind of, um, the realization that I've had through the many, many years of, of failing and, and winning and failing again. So important. And yes, I definitely did the same thing at the beginning of my business. I didn't want to maybe niche down so much that, you know, maybe if there were other inquiries that could have come Mm -hmm. in that I would basically be, you know, denying the opportunity just by saying I was niching down too much. But in reality, people are still going to come to you. If you're doing great work, people will still come to you, even if it's not within like the niche that you're putting out there. And then it's up to you to decide if you want to keep it right. Um, So I think that that's really interesting too, because I think at the beginning of our businesses, opportunity is something that we don't get to see very often. So we are 
um, essentially molding our businesses and molding ourselves to try to say yes to every opportunity. And then obviously, as you continue to say yes, and then you continue to work and you continue to build, um, at some point, we're able to finally say, no, no, that doesn't work for me anymore. This is what I need. And I think that's really the hope for all of us is that we can continue working that um, that trajectory, right? That, that progress. Yes, totally. And so for someone who maybe is just getting started, what would be your recommendation uh, as far as if they do get opportunities in that don't seem like the best fit? Personally, I did take a whole lot of opportunities at the beginning just because I wanted to start the business, right? And then it it took time to be able to get to that place of being able to be a little bit more, you know, having more control or whatever about which projects I was taking on. Yeah, I think a lot of, I mean, similar to kind of like the planning process with clients and couples, um, a lot of times we get to where we need to be without with seeing what they didn't want to do or what they don't like. And so kind of understanding that, I think a lot of my experience came from saying yes to an opportunity, riding through that opportunity, fighting through that opportunity, and then figuring out, okay, great, I did it this way, and I charged this much, and now I'm ready for the next the next chapter and the next section. And I think, um, you know, what's really, really crucial is I think the experience part is crucial. So I think people have to understand that failing is a part of this business model, you have to win, and you have to feel the woes in order to get to the wins. And I think, um, every experience is, is so valuable for you. So even if it blows up in your face, just remember that you survived it. And the fact that you were able to get through it, even if you got fired or you fire a client and you feel like it's not survival, you survived it. You experienced it. You're going to take those experiences and now move them into the next chapter of your life and the next you know job that you're going to do. And I think that's kind of the, the, the part that maybe the tenacity and the drive and the, uh, the distance that we have to go to really build yourself, it's, it feels excruciating at times, but just know that it's part of the process. Unfortunately, unfortunately, it's part of the process. Yes. And I think that's the difference maker between those who stay in business and who, those who don't. Right. And I, I still deal with this all the time. You know, you're what, 15 years in, you said I'm six years in, and these, these are the conversations I have to continue to have in my head of what can I take from this? Um, and what can I learn from this? How can I grow and not not throw my hands up, but say, Mm -hmm. I survived. What can we learn from this? Let's move on. And I still have value. Even if something goes wrong, I still have value and just keep moving forward. Yeah. And I think that what's interesting too, is, you know, looking at your business and my business as well. um, If, if, you know, if I, if I had my old mindset, I'd be like, oh, I'm failing because I'm not doing all the amazing things that you do with everything you do in terms of how you built your business and how you also brand your business. Like every time you roll something out, I'm always like, oh my God, it's so stunning. (laughs) It's so clean. It's so professional. And that is just not my style. And I think that that's okay as well, because again, we have, um, there's so much business out there. And I think that that's another thing too, is you'll figure out who your circle is and what your community is. And that's okay as well, because we can all be harmonious together. It's, um, is- you know, I think I kind of always say it's like, I think the event industry and people that are in this community, we are the band on the Titanic. We unfortunately <laughs> do not get the lifeboat. We are the ones that have to play through while our clients and the shady vendors and whomever ever gets on a lifeboat. And you're just like, okay, let's keep going. <laughs> Let's keep going. We are the band. And I think that that is a mentality that we have to kind of absorb to continue like, you know, going through this process of being an events industry person, being a, an event producer, an event planner, an event designer. I think it's just this constant, um, you know, wheel that we, we, we go through. Totally. And Jason, that's so funny that you say that because anytime you do anything on social, I have the same thought. So this is just like <laughs> proof that we have this crazy, like comparison thing that's just like yeah. built into us. Yeah. And I know that happens in every industry, but I really do think that in our in- industry in particular, it tends to be even more so because we're usually putting our best foot forward, like because of the nature of how what our job is like you said we're the band of the titanic we have to make sure everything looks good and keeps on going Mm -hmm. not that the titanic sinking looked good but you know know what i mean um but yeah it looks good at one point it looks good at one point yeah yeah it did but yeah i think there's just there's so much that we can take from that of like how can we unravel this comparison thing and i have to say one thing i do love about your social though with your personal instagram which by the way we can talk about like how do you how do you yeah 
decide what goes on your personal versus your yeah, business. There really Instagram. is no strategy for why, but we'll talk <laughs> well, about it. Well, it seems, uh, yeah. Okay. So maybe there's not a strategy, but you're very authentic. You come off as yourself. You're always like in, you know, you're behind the scenes of all of the events that you do are so hilarious to me. Like you're always like showing what's real, like your real emotions of like, mm -hmm. oh, I'm so tired and like whatever, but you're making fun, like whatever. You're also one of the funniest people I know. So it's also very entertaining and that becomes part of your brand. And that is what attracted me to you when mm. I was a couple considering who I wanted to work with. I was like, I really like this person and he keeps it real. Um, cause I found your personal Instagram, not just your business yeah, Instagram. Yeah. So yeah. Anyway, that's really good to know. I mean, like what's, what's funny is it, it, that took a long time to, I think, be free with my voice. And again, the strategy for me was never a strategy. I think I use my personal cause it's the one I feel most comfortable using. It's the one that I have the better following on. And then my business just became kind of like a gallery page of like, okay, well, if you don't want to hear my, you know, shrilling voice, you know, going through a load in, then just go to this page and you'll see some event stuff. And I think, again, there's strategies to obviously trying to build both platforms. I think, I think it came into this kind of realization of knowing that like, you know, if I try to be something that I'm not, then my clients that come to me are going to be the ones that like that person. And it, in order for me to be that person, I have to you know, do more work to be that person while then managing all the different things that I have to manage. And I think that's something really important for us to identify too, is that, um, you know, I still think I can be professional. I'm definitely more um, authentic and you know, sometimes emotional, like obviously through 2020, it was, it was a lot of trauma that I was expelling on my social. But I think at the end of the day, like if you can get my authenticity, my genuineness, because it is really truly me that you're getting. Um, I think it breeds really well for clients that like that. But again, I've had clients that don't like that. And I've had, um, you know, opportunities that may not have fit. And I tried, and it just was so much more work to be that person, or so much work to work in that process that really wasn't authentically me. And I think, um, that's maybe where, you know, for me and my choices in my business and the way that I want to live, that's the, the decision I made is to be authentic and to be okay with not being everybody's cup of tea, but also, um, you know, maybe that's why I didn't survive really well working in corporate companies. That's why I had to go and start my own. Mm, yes, definitely. Yeah. So kind of just going back to that, just to tease that out a little bit, someone's going to get disappointed in the relationship if you're not being authentic, either it's you having to put on an air and be the person that this person that you attracted when you were being inauthentic is expecting you to be, or you're going to be yourself. And then the person that was attracted to this other version is going to be disappointed. So, so it's, it's just, you're attracting the right thing. Um, and so it's worth it to do that. And like you've said, like there's plenty of business out there. I think we put on this thing, like, you know, if we are our true authentic selves, like what if we push too many people away? I'm telling you right now, that's the thing that attracted me to you, right? Yeah. So you're going to be pulling in the right people. Um, well, and, and what's amazing too is, you know, working with you was such a collaboration. So in no way, when I talk about that wedding too, I never say that I planned it. I, we really kind of created that together, but you came up with a lot of those ideas. And, and obviously you having your event experience, I think made that relationship so harmonious, but also collaboration is not something you can teach everybody. And for you mm -hmm. to trust me and trust the process, but also we were able to come together, humble ourselves. We never tried to out event experience each other. We literally just said, okay, here's what you want. How can we get there? How can we make this happen and make it look the best for what we needed? And I think that's another thing that um, you know, I recently got a business partner, Chris, shout out to Christina, and it's been life-changing for me where she's reminding me that with the events, especially weddings, but events in general, there's a goal. There's a goal that you have to keep driving towards, but there's a billion obstacles to get to that goal and to have the right people to keep pushing you forward in the best way and in the best direction, I think is really the, the, the roadmap for us in events. I love that. And that was going to be one of my questions for you is kind of what's next for your company. So that's so interesting to hear that you got a business partner. Can you talk a little bit about how that came to be and uh, I mean, how you envision it going? Therapy? <laughs> I don't know. Um, we've no, we actually met in corporate. We both worked at SBE together. And so if people that don't know SBE it was one of the biggest nightlife groups in 
um, LA and then became kind of an internationally well-known brand. Um, if you were the fan of the Hills, it was known to be kind of the, the face of Hyde and, and those kind of nightlife venues at the time. And, you know, we worked there for a very long time. She created the, the catering department and I, you know, worked as an event manager at one of the properties, but I started as a server. So I really worked my way, my way up into getting to this point. And so when I talk about being authentic, you can be authentic and be personable, but there is so much work that also goes with that. So in no way is it just about being who you are and that'll just make it till you break <laughs> it. Like it really takes so many different facets, but again, failing is a big part of it. So really the next chapter for us, I think is really become focusing on what it is that we do love and, and and that really has been kind of educating and creating content and really elevating our community and letting people know that we are not just a company that's here to make you spend more money. We are here to make you spend money smartly. We have experience and failures for years and years and other traumatic events that didn't work that way. And that is why we are educating you and giving you the information we are giving you to use this specific certified vendor that we know will show up. We know, and those are all those different aspects that I think, um, you know, really empower. So I think with having a second person and having a partner, uh, it's kind of now opening myself up to be able to do more things that we really want to do, which is why the podcast was launched this year, the YouTube channel. And again, um, I think for us, it's really just elevating our community and letting people know how hard the event industry works, you know, and obviously we all experienced a traumatic experience in the last two years when we all saw our businesses go away overnight, especially with corporate. I mean, that was I'm assuming devastating with social, yeah. we had to essentially some, some planners, you know, had to drag their clients with them for the last two to three years and make zero dollars doing it. And I think, you know, I think what's moving on for the next generation is really just making sure that people know that we're not just um, a service person. We're not just like, you know, we're, we're not really indispensable and you really need us to actually execute something that you really want to do, like a big corporate event or a launch party or a wedding day. And I think um, there's so much, not garbage out there, but there is so much, there's so many TV shows about wedding planning and about how, you know, I'm going to come in and be like, orchids everywhere, crystals, glittering, <laughs> and then make you spend hundreds of thousands of dollars. That is not how we all work. And so I think that that's kind of the, what I'd like to change about our community too. And obviously with conversations of diversity, equity, inclusion, and now the other words that are being added like justice and um, accessibility, you know, there's more letters being added to that as well. You know, I think really advocating for equality and representation in this community, just like in every community, um, is something that we really want to focus on too. Building that community is really, really a big passion for us right now. And that's mm -hmm. kind of where we want to work with the right people. We want to work with um, the right clients and we want to create great content and we want to create great work and we want to do things that move the needle forward and, and give us impact. And that's kind of the journey that we're on right now. I love that. And it's no surprise to me. I mean, um, it's sort of at the foundation all of that of all of that is creating great experiences but how can you go beyond that and beyond just the day of experience create a community um that is going to help you as jason like feel more fulfilled in the every day in your business right because if you don't have some of those passion projects it, you can totally oh. risk getting burnt out all of that. And I know you've been saying for so long that you want to launch your podcast and your YouTube channel. I so know, congrats <laughs> to you because yeah, that's, that's a dream being realized. And I just, it's great to hear that you bring on a partner is what allowed for that. Oh yeah. Um, so can you talk a little bit about like how those conversations, I mean, you don't have to go into detail, but like, yeah. you know, there may be listeners who are considering, should I bring on a partner? Uh, how does that work? That type of thing. I mean, I think it, I think it takes a lot of work independently first I think having that pause for me was really good for me to just acknowledge where I was in my life and knowing that you know I poured myself and my health and my life into a business for 15 years you know I really compromised my health to do that mm -hmm. and I think mm -hmm. that that's something that you know um, you know, when we talk about things like addiction and we talk about all these other facets in the world about mental wellness and health and all the things like 
our industry doesn't exactly promote it because we are constantly showing how much we're booking, how often we're working, um, you know, how big our business is getting, who we're working with. That is kind of the, the social. So I really just kind of took a lot of time to process where my life was at and what I need to change and really figuring out that it's really hard to do this alone. And I think that being able to find someone that you trust, it took it's taking a lot of work. It takes so much work. And to be completely transparent, I think um, therapy, you know, really, really helps. We have actually got a counselor, a couples counselor to help us also really solidify a partnership and really make it work so that we can also communicate the same because two people mm -hmm. with two very different experiences and also two different genders, we communicate differently. It's just part of our DNA. So I think that that's something that we had to I really wanted to make sure we're doing it right. And, and again, you know, if a, a partner isn't in your, um, isn't in your, I guess, your path for you and as a business and you're able to manage it and you have the boundaries to be able to divide yourself from your clients, that's amazing. I just wasn't able to do that. I wasn't able to build boundaries with my people, which is probably why, you know, again, like for me, I felt like we became such good friends during the process. But mm. I realized that after you do that so many times, it's also very, very taxing on a person, totally. you know, cause again, I'm just there essentially sitting in between, you know, sleeping in between you both, you know, <laughs> <laughs> definitely. That's so funny. Cause I, I just had a coaching session, uh, that I was on the other side of, uh, yeah. with my mindset coach right before this. And I told her about some problems I'm having with setting boundaries. And she said, I'm going to look at my notes right now. We take on if we don't set boundaries, we take on people's emotions. So you for 15 years were doing that. You were yeah. just taking on everybody's I was emotions. Eating, I was gaining the calories for it. I was <laughs> like, I would tell my brides and grooms like, Hey, I'm going to, I'm going to gain the weight for you. So if you book me, I will, I will swallow your stress. And I really genuinely did. I swallowed all of the stress and, and, and trauma and, and anxieties of also planning something that a lot of times, if you're in the social space, you are spending way more money than you thought. And I know, same for you, as you, as somebody who is on the other side of it, um, I'm sure that it was kind of startling to you how when you go into different parts of your wedding planning, you're like, oh, I did not, you can budget for it all you want, but you, there's so many different factors that you don't think about until you're doing it. And I think um, boundaries is probably something that having a second person to be able to remind me of those things, but also advocate for my boundaries has been life-changing mm. it's been mm -hmm. life-changing because again i'm i'm in it i'm the one that's like so again and all i want to do is when i get these opportunities i'm like well i, I want to help them i want to i want to do this i want to make this work i can and you start projecting what this opportunity is for you so having a second person to kind of you know validate and also realize some of those things and so it, and say like oh that's actually not as great as you think it is yeah, it's been really beneficial, but boundaries is probably mm. one of the big things to a secret that I think the event industry may or may not be, you know, there are some amazing people out there that I think have good boundaries. And I always thought that you had great boundaries. So <laughs> maybe, maybe we're all just, you know, we're all just trying to do what we can. Yeah, definitely. So many things in there. So just as like, if, if you're listening and you're like, Hmm, what can, what can I consider here? I love that you did couples therapy with your partner. Mm -hmm. So cool and so smart and thoughtful and intentional about how you want to be creating your business. If that doesn't sound like it's like, if that's like too woo woo for you, like yeah. there's definitely coaches out coaches. there too, yes, who absolutely. will help with this. Yeah, definitely. Um, so both of those things are, are great options. Um, and we did actually interview with both. We did actually talk to a coach as well. And I think where I kind of resonate more with feely feely. And then there's the business side that again, my partner, Christina is, way better out for me. And she has been tremendous with our business too, is I think you just have to find what's right and what speaks to both of you. And I think communication is also key. If you want to find a partner, communication and expectations. And, and again, being very clear about what the goal is. Definitely. And I'm getting a lot out of this too, by the way, Jason, because I'm thinking my, so anybody who works with us at Dynamo knows Mackenzie very well. She's like my partner in crime. She's not an actual partner in the company, but she's definitely like my number two and you know all of our clients have great relationships with her i think we both i'm like totally gonna have a conversation with her after this and be like okay what can we do to help each other because we both i think have challenges with setting boundaries and by the way that's 
that's not something that just happens in the wedding world. Like it definitely happens with corporate too. Even Absolutely. though everyone's, everyone thinks, oh, cause you're not spending your own money. It's not going to be as emotional, um, which it's true. There's not as much emotion about budget being spent, but there's a lot of other stuff that comes up with corporate, just internal politics, things that 100%. I, yeah, things that I started Dynamo to get away from just like the internal issues that I was just like, I just want to go create great experiences that yeah. are super, you know, business minded, design driven, awesome experiences. I don't want to have to deal with all, like, all these internal politics, but those are the things that start to, when, as we become closer and closer and closer with our clients, because it's who we are, because we're event people, we're in the hospitality. We want to make sure everything's taken care of for them. Those are the things that kind of like start to trickle yeah. in. Yeah. So anyway, yeah. I, this well, is I like think, a little coaching session for me right now. <laughs> well, and I think that's kind of the thing. I think that this, this industry is really built on relationships and it's not just networking that you're supposed to be doing. You're supposed to actually be building relationships. And I think yeah. that's something that's really, really, you know, maybe with one part of the generation of the event industry, where back in the day was about networking and getting business cards and doing that this time it's really about like engaging with each other and really understanding like what it is that moves you want and what, what, what you kind of, I guess, believe in and figuring out if that's what I believe in too, because again, it's, we've all worked with those partners that were like, you know, those creative partners or those vendors that were like, never again, never again, will I put myself <laughs> in this position. And so really being able to identify those things too, and figuring out like who you don't want to work with and that being okay as well. So with all this talk of boundaries, it's not just about saying no to say no, but what it allows you to do, it gives you time and energy and space to then allow all of the amazing parts of what you want to do and the opportunities you want to do will start flooding in. Because again, you know, distractions are distractions, but allowing yourself that space to be able to say, oh my gosh, there was an opportunity here that I didn't even notice. I didn't even see, or, oh my gosh, maybe I did want to really do that podcast, or I want to start coaching. I want to start doing e-courses. So I think boundaries really allow us that to happen because you really can't say yes to everything. And that's yeah. really hard advice for me too, because I still, you know, I, I want to, I want to order everything. I want to buy everything and I want to <laughs> say yes to everything, you know, and that's what I'll have to work on with my therapist. <laughs> Totally. But yeah, I, I totally agree. It allows you to bring, say yes to the right things. But if you're thinking like, okay, I'm in a situation, like I'm in a project right now where I, things aren't going so great, or like, I feel like the communication's off or something like that. Just know that you have the opportunity every day to change that and to have a, a hard conversation about how things need to go so that everyone has a better experience. And this is something I'm working on as well. You have to show up as the leader and the expert that you are in your event planning business to say, hey, if we stick to these communication lines or X, Y, Z, whatever it is that needs to change, it's gonna be better for both of us because there's gonna be less confusion. There's gonna like, not, the ball's not gonna get dropped. Whatever it is, you position it because there's a reason that you're feeling like something should change, right? And yeah. it's because something's gonna go better and your client's gonna get a better result that they're happier with if that change is made. So just remember that. It, you might have to have like a weird, awkward, hard conversation, but everyone's gonna be happier in the end because of it. So just know that like, there's always that positive outcome to focus on. Absolutely. And I think that, you know, I don't even think it's negative to say when, you know, when you have, exhausted those options and you've been able to have that that you know conversation and say is this working how can we improve it and you try it at the end of the day there are going to be opportunities too that just don't fit at some point it won't it just won't work and i think there's i don't know if it's something about my discipline where i thought i owed them something to finish it and go through the very end and go regardless of what happens or how much money i'm losing or how much money i'm getting that at some point you have to identify whether or not this is going to be healthy for you and it's going to be healthy for your client. And I think that also is something that will come with experience because it's very hard to fire a client. It's very hard to be fired by a client, but once it also happens, you know, I wish that we kind of were in a community that we're able to not remove the stigma of it, but be able to kind of talk about it a little bit more confidently and not feel so shamed when it does happen because it happens, you know? Yeah. And it, and it sucks. It, it sucks to tell a client or a couple that this isn't working. And I actually don't think I fit anymore into this opportunity. And, you know, it's terrible, the terrible thing, but it allows you to also advocate for yourself. And that's really what you have to do too. You have to advocate for yourself and have confidence in knowing that you are the expert here 
regardless of yes. whatever emotional and you know budgetary things at some point you have to put your foot down or at some point you have to say this is what i believe and this is where my my expertise falls exactly and even if it is if there's like something holding on to you where you're like i don't want to disappoint them or something like that just remember it probably is going to be a better better situation for them too yeah. Uh, I mean, obviously it depends on where you are in the planning process, but you know, <laughs> yeah, and contractually, yeah. make sure you make sure the contracts state and protect you. Yes, absolutely. absolutely. Awesome. Well, thanks so much. Any other tidbits, pieces of advice, secrets about the events world that you want to would love to share with our audience to help them run more profitable businesses and deliver better events. I think just understanding that we are in a business of people. So, you know, they talk about B2B, B2C, we are H to H, we will always be working with a human. And so just keep that in mind as you grow and scale or change or even leave the industry. Um, you know, we're all human beings at the end of the day. And communication is really important. But you know, kind of figure out what you want to do and, and find the joy in what you do and, and lean in with that and be authentic to that. So that's really all I have to share. Find the joy in what you do. This has been so amazing, Jason. Thank you so much for coming on the show. If anyone would like to get in touch with you or just find out more about your company, what's the best way? Um, you can find me being completely real on Jason Roars on Instagram. That's J-A-S-O-N-R-O-A-R-S, like a lion. And um, my podcast is The Reality. It's R-H-E-E-A-L-I-T-Y. Um, and you can just find me there and usually find me on some stage talking and trying to make people laugh. Awesome. And we'll be sure to link to those links in the uh, podcast notes for this episode, if you're listening to the podcast or on YouTube. Um, but thanks again, Jason. See you soon. Bye. Thank you.